In this lesson, I want to focus on variables and specifically variable names. Now, before I go any further, we've got this file here that we left in the last lesson, and I just want to go ahead and rename this. Currently, it's called index.php, but it doesn't really tell me anything about the file. And I like to name my files with something meaningful. So to rename this, I'm just going to right click and rename. And I'm going to call this hello world. And if you notice, I've used something called camel kiss. And if you're not sure what that is, it's just where we capitalize the second and any subsequent words. And it just makes it a little bit easier to read. Well, I've finished with this file, so I'm just going to close it by clicking on the cross here and I'm going to create a new file. Now I can create a new file by clicking on this icon here. I can go to File, New File. Uh, I can also press Command N. Now I prefer to click on this icon, so I'll click on that, and we're going to call this variables.php. And again, remember that extension. Uh, the first few lessons, I get a lot of students who say, my code's not working. And the reason it's not working is they've just forgot to put that little extension on the end. Okay, well, we're in variables.php and let's open that PHP tag, left angle bracket, question mark, PHP. I'll press enter a couple of times. Now we're going to create some variables and I like to think of a variable as a box. And in that box, I can hold something. And that's something I can hold, could be a number, it could be some letters, as in a string. It could be a true or false answer. It could also be multiple things, so multiple strings or multiple numbers, or indeed a combination of both. Now the arrays, as we call those, we'll be dealing with later in the course. I just wanna keep things simple for the time being. Let's go ahead and name our first variable. And variables always start with a dollar sign. I'm gonna call this one simply A, and I'm gonna put A equal to one. I'm going to create another one, B, and B could be equal to 34.567. And remembering to put the semicolon on the end of each line. Now these two variables, so variable A has a value of one, and it's called an integer value. And you can see that there when I hover above. This is an integer. This one here is called a floating point number. Some people call them doubles. Now the next one we could have is what we call a string. And a string is a series of characters. So for example, we might have name equals, and let's say somebody's name is Peter. So that is a string. So the name variable is holding the value Peter. So imagine that box, on the front of my box, I've written dollar $name, tell me what's inside the box. And inside the box, I have the word Peter. Now let's say I'm doing a little bit of a database or I'm doing something with Peter. I want to track him somehow or I want to find something out about him and, and store it somewhere. Let's say he's a member of a sporting club. We could have a variable name such as is member and we can set that equal to true. Now again, I'm using camel case and is he a member? Well, yes, it's a true answer. Now, if you notice, this is not in quotes. This is not a string. This is what we call a Boolean. So it's either true or false. Now, when I'm creating my variables, I like to give them really good variable names. So when I go back in later weeks, months, years, I know what the variable is. Having something like A or B doesn't really tell me much. In fact, having name doesn't really tell me much. I could say that it should be first name. So first name is member again doesn't really tell me much is member of what so is member of sports club that tells me a little bit more about that particular variable now obviously if you were just dealing with a single sports club then is member that would be valid you can use that now the other way to do this instead of using the word true we can put a single value in there of one so one is the same as saying true if I wanted to say false, I could say false, or I could say zero. So either of those is valid. We can also start a variable name with a capital letter. So for example, if I said color, and yes, I'm spelling this the American way, that's fine. 
Uh, in the UK and Australia, we spell it with a U R, but I imagine most of the audience will be American. So we'll spell it the American way. So color equals, and the color might be green, for example. I mentioned that we can have camel case in the names and I actually recommend that, but we can also do the following. We could have first underscore name. So we could do it like that as well. So let's just put uh, Sam in here. So first underscore name could be Sam, that's valid. We can also include numbers in the variable name. So for example, uh, this nine equals, and let's just have that as blue. Doesn't make any sense, but that doesn't matter. But I don't recommend including numbers in your variable names. Uh, I think having words is much more meaningful. Now, when it comes to numbers, the number cannot be the first character. So for example, if I have nine, this equals blue, that is invalid. You cannot start a variable name with a number. Now I've mentioned underscores up here. And the question is, well, can we start a variable name with an underscore? And yes, you can. So we could have something like underscore name equals, and I'll just put this equal to Bob. Now again, I don't recommend that you use an underscore as your first character. And that will become obvious as we go through the course, because there are some what we call global variables that have this underscore as their first character, and they're very special variables. So to avoid any confusion, I would always say, don't start your variable names with an underscore. Now there's one more thing that you can't do, and I deliberately did it up here in line 15. I used the word this followed by a number, which is fine, but what you can't do is have this on its own. So this equals blue, you cannot have that. This in coding terms is a very, very special variable name. So please do not use that. We won't be using it in this course, but you're more than likely to progress after you finish this one into other aspects of PHP. And this is a very, very special word. It's a very special keyword for a variable that you should not use. And it's to do with objects, but not something you should worry about at this stage. So just as a quick recap, variable names, must start with either a letter or an underscore, but I don't recommend you use the underscore. You can include numbers as long as the number is not the first character. You can use underscores to separate words in your variable name, although I do recommend that you should use camel case instead. The other thing is to make your variable names descriptive. So when you come back to them in a few weeks, months, years time, you know exactly what they are. And finally, never use the variable name this. If you found this video useful, then remember to give me a quick thumbs up. And if you would like to be notified when I release new videos, then hit that subscribe button and remember to click on the little notification bell.